Well, welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition of Choir Boys Cutlery Outdoors. I've got to get used to it. It's Choir Boys Outdoors. That's what we're doing now. We're in outdoors. It's going to be a rendition. It is a ego killer rendition, if you will. About froze my ass off in the swamp rendition. Before we get started, guys, there was a time in this country where 22 veterans a day took their own lives. Now, depending on the stats and all that, it differs everything you read, but the main thing is this, the number zero. Anything above zero, simply unacceptable. Vets, we love you. You have a place here. That's all it means, you're welcome here. We're not a charity. We don't do any of that. Just want you to know you're welcome here. We're back to Blue over here. We support Leo Hall to the chagrin of many. How do you do that, Scab? Well, we don't break the damn law. We we do, because I have. We accept responsibility for it. And finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. So, last night, I unveiled the Ego Killer, collaboration between myself and Donnie B. All Day. Now, here's the thing, guys. There's going to be, this is a longer video. I put a ton, and I mean a ton of time, into testing this, seeing how I liked it, getting the groove, getting the feel. So, we got a lot of footage. I was probably, seriously, probably five, six hours in the swamp, at the stump, just kind of going over some stuff. I'm going to show you a little bit of everything, all right? The strong point of this is the chopper. It is a monster blade. It hits incredibly hard. Now, I went to the swamp instead of the studio for one reason, one reason only. See the bike there? That is, we've had a couple of harsh, harsh storms over the past couple weeks. And in the swamp, trees will be pushed over some bigger diameter stuff. I didn't want to just go over to the studio because I knew I was going to be chopping a lot and cut down everything over there, if that makes sense. Plus, there's a lot bigger diameter trees out there. And sure as shit, when I walked out there, there was probably five or six. You go from like a pine forest, and then it's kind of like an, an oak grove, not an oak grove, but an oak hill type thing, dry land, and then you walk literally down in the swamp. So by doing that, there were four or five within 50 to 60 feet of being in the swamp. Perfect conditions for testing out the Ego Killer. First thoughts on it. The handle is stupid comfortable. I mean insanely comfortable. Now, I need to bear, bear mention here and bring this up. I've got busted up hands. It was cold out there. So there is a little bit of deflection. That is not from the handle. That is simply from my hand just kind of letting go at a point. I also should have pulled my shirt down there, but it is what, that's, that's extra money. That's, that's OnlyFans type money right there, son. That kind of thing. But here's the thing. All right, see, there's a, there's a limb. I wanted y'all to see this one was actually blown over. Now, here's the thing. The handle is supremely comfortable. Got a good grip. This is about a six inch diameter tree. It's been laid over. It had to be for a couple of weeks. It's, it's not rotted. But it's just got to where it's that super hard. So what we're going to do is cut about halfway through. We're just going to bang. And then I'm going to show you the edge. I'm going to move the camera over. And I'm going to show you again. I'm telling y'all, this thing hits insanely hard. Now, I told you. I told you. I wasn't cutting paper with this. I wasn't doing anything. We just went to the swamp and we got to work. And to my dear tree-hugging friends, dead serious right here, we didn't cut one live thing down. There was enough stuff down over there that we could process up plenty. Matter of fact, tomorrow, I'm going to try to move some over to the studio to have some extra firewood and to have some extra mediums to cut on. And you can just see right there, and I'm swinging with this thing. There's no holding back. There's no none of that shit. I'm bringing it down as hard as I can, and I'm using the, the point between the two edges. There's that top swoop, and then there's kind of that... that curve right right there that axe point right there right there that axe point that's what i love on this style chopper now we move the camera over and you can see i had worked the back end more than the front that's a large large tree and right here again we're just bringing straight force straight down chips flying son now in all fairness the first few minutes the, the first thing that y'all seen me hit with this was when I turned the camera on. I walked through, so the first minute or two was of this, which would have been about the first 10, 15 minutes, was finding the sweet spot on this thing. I'll tell you what makes swinging this so enjoyable. 
It's eight millimeters thick. I'm gonna give you all some specs here in a minute. It's eight millimeters thick. It's my car to handles. There's no shock in the handle. Now right here, we're just gonna process up another tree down, another dead tree. Now this one's actually kind of dried out and kind of hard. So I just wanted to use that again, dropping that ax point right on it. And you can see, you should be able to hear, I tried to leave the, the volume up some of how hard we're swinging. Now, let me give you some quick, let me give you some quick uh, specs while we're going through right here. The blade length is 14 and a half. The cutting edge is 13. The handle length is six and a quarter. The inner grip, that all important inner grip to me, is four and a half. Now, the handle thickness, and I'm, I'm doing these, Garen Pandaloop, who's an awesome dude, shout out to Garen, had brought this up. He, it helps him to know the diameter. Garen's got a smaller hand. So here's what I did, Garen. I'm going to pin a comment with the actual diameter of the handle, but the handle thickness is seven eighths. The handle width is an inch and a quarter. So it's a bigger handle, fits my hand really, really well, hits hard. Now, what we did right here, guys, is I moved over and we hit some vines. Why? You see them bouncing. The other reason I like going in the swamp or in the woods or the studio or whatever, it's not a controlled environment. I didn't want to just buckle something down and show you all just, you know, hitting something. Now, I may do that one day at work, get a couple of vice grips, put a four by four in it and just cut it for time. But the initial testing, I wanted to show you on, you don't see right there that edge. Now, is it hair popping sharp? No, wasn't meant to be. I cannot specify that enough. I'm going to do a couple things at the trunk and you're going to see it's got an edge and it'll cut, but it was not intended for that. And we'll discuss that when we get there. Now, right here, <clears throat> Again, it was about this point probably while I was out there that I started just really getting the groove of the knife. Anytime you got a, a, a new knife, it takes a little bit. And I know it's not for some of you Daniel Boone types who everything you touch, you're a master at. I, I get it. I got it. But for us novices, it takes a minute. And then you throw in the size, just the sheer size of this blade. And people say, oh, it's not that big. Yeah, okay. I'm a lot bigger than you think, and I'm don't, and it looks big when I'm holding it. There's a lot of knives that don't. It is a big, beastly blade. All right, now I've lost weight again, and I'm, I'm right there hovering, about to go into 270s, which that would be for the first time in years. Why do I bring that up? Because I'm, I'm about 5'9", about 270, I'm fairly strong. And I hit, I promise you, as hard as most. I can promise you that. I swing hard. Why do I bring that up? Because in all of this, in all of this, every tree we hit, all the stuff we hit, all the stuff we did, there's not a chip, there's not a roll, the knife didn't magically explode, it held up and it held in, and I'm very proud of that. Now, I, I mentioned it wasn't hair popping sharp and it was never intended to be. However, the edge is there. The bevel and the geometry is there that it wouldn't take a whole lot and I could get it that way. Now, I wanted to show you all this, okay? It took a minute to cut this ratchet strap. That's two inch ratchet strap, toe strap, uh, whatever you want to call it. Rugged, rugged stuff, but it got through it. Now, it would take me probably, and I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious, I could probably take five or ten minutes and have this thing hair popping sharp. That's, I wanted a hitter, but I wanted to show you it does have an edge. The edge does work, and, and I just wanted to add some of it in. I didn't do a whole lot of cutting. That's not what it was designed to do. It's designed to bang, and it absolutely thumps. The thing that I'm so excited about this is, and I'm, I'm going to be honest with y'all, the thing that I love the mo is the comfort of that handle. Now, it's got a nice choil. If, if I do... Here's the thing, guys. Down the road, we may do another collab and build another chopper, and then I'll put, put a different edge on this and make it a bushcrafter. So it's got a choil if I want to do that. I'm going to give you a good look at the edge all throughout this. At the stump, we hit a lot of high-pressure stuff, and I thought, you know what? Let's stab a few things. So we're going to do the John Peter stab test. However, I miss that son of a bitch about five times. That's the God's honest truth. 
I could have edited it out, and I thought, I mean, there's a point where I actually kind of stuck right there. I just kind of laughed because it's like, good Lord. But again, I want to leave it in. Why? Well, I'm driving it into a, a, a red oak from West Virginia, and I think we wind up right there. Again, not hard stabs, but you take this thing, you take this thing with a 14 and a half inch blade, son, that's eight millimeters thick, and you drive it down with a little force, it's going through whatever it needs to. Now, it went straight through three different pieces of sidewall of tire, and it actually went into four, but it went through three pieces of steel belted radial and into a fourth just with a six or eight inch punch right there boom quick punch coming down hard i like doing this for a couple reasons and i mentioned a lot but for the tip no 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 damage to the tip at all none the handle scales stayed on very very firm all right now this is after a ton of chopping some of this stuff too guys like right here you're just doing a little slice and just showing you look Right there, I wanted to show you. Doing a little fine work with it. Um, again, not made for that. Oh, let me just put it this way. You could put the kind of edge you wanted on this knife and do anything in this world you wanted to do with it. That would be fine. Its intended use is a banger and a hitter. And D-Bad hit that right out of the park. There, I missed again. I, I, the day was a day of missing for old scabbard. But here's the thing. I'm going to leave it in and I'm going to show you. I want you to get a good view of the knife. Now, y'all see that dark wood? That's as solid as it comes. The stuff surrounding is not. But that limb's been out there a while, and I need to get it in smaller pieces. What better way than to take the ego killer and just go straight down on it? But you see that dark? That is hard. Right there, boom, boom. And we go flat. There's a bunch of times. See, that was what I was telling y'all. It's a little chilly, and my hand started giving way after three or four hours. A little bit of deflection, that's me, that's not the knife. And I think all too often, I think all too often, as 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 someone who demonstrates or whatever the hell y'all call what I do, as that type of person on YouTube, we, we want to quickly blame a knife. We want to quickly blame the handle. We want to throw the fault. But the truth is, it goes to skill set. It goes to being used to the knife. It goes to your physical uh, limitations. Now, my hands still have a pretty good bit of strength, but there are times, guys, they give. They just give. I hate it as much as anybody. And you can see that a time or two now. Didn't mean to go on a diatribe there, but, but I just wanted to say, if you hold this knife, if we decide to have this as a production run, you'll see what I'm saying. It is stupid comfortable. It's just like you'll pick it up, and you have to almost look down at what you picked up. I'm dead serious. Because what it looks like is just this monster heavy weight forward blade that's designed for chopping. It's a monster knife, but it's not ridiculously heavy. Now, this part right here, we're going to use the axe. And this is kind of, I debated putting this part first because that's that old hardwood that you get from a big box store. You know, the shit that's petrified that'll break everything you got. That's it right there. Right there. Now, I, I mentioned that again because right, right coming up, we're just going to use about a minute or two of our time and process up a bunch of firewood right here. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to do some chopping. We're going to do some straight push cuts. We're going to bang on it. We're going to put some pressure on the edge. And like I was saying earlier, guys, I went, I went straight flat, just flat swings on some. Because in some of the demonstrations that I do, I'm not always trying to chop for time. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to demonstrate the toughness of the edge a lot of times. I'm trying to get the feel of it too. Like I'll come back in the next couple weeks and do another review on it. You're going to see it a lot. You're going to see it as much as you saw the preacher because I absolutely love the damn thing. But the, I guarantee you this, and I can make you this promise, the more you see it, the more impressed you're going to be with it because the better I'm going to get with it. Now, right here, this is what I like about having an eight mil stick, right? I don't need a baton stick. I really don't. A couple quick pushes and we go straight down and straight through. And I was able to, 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 to prepare up a good piece of wood this way. And I had a good time doing it. It was a lot of fun right here. Just kind of bounce, bounce baton. And I guess is what you'd call it. No rolling, no chipping, none of that. 
overall, this thing is a monster. I love it. You see right there, and I'm telling y'all, that's that hard-ass wood that you get from Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. It's just tough. That's why I wanted to use it. I wanted to use it as much to check the edge as I did for everything. I did a lot of that, too. But this is a fun blast of a knife. Guys, we've got about a minute left. And like I said, I'm going to come back and do another one because this thing's just a beast. And I feel like I'm just getting my groove with it. Do I love it? Yeah. Good Lord, yeah. This thing is kick-ass. And it, it, I love being a part of it. Guys, listen. I started up my memberships and I started up my Patreon. Tomorrow, Megatron and I, Sunday at uh, the, the 15th, Megatron and I are going to do a video explaining everything, kind of kicking it off. And then she's going to have an exclusive video over there. But here's the deal. No matter what you do, comment, like, share, any of that, I am appreciative and show is, so is she. Huge shout out to John Peters. Dude sent me some fat wood. I'm loving it. Thank you, my brother. And to Steve Guru. Brother, he sent me a bunch of knives that your guys are going to be seeing over this next week. Dude, Steve, those are awesome. Shout out to him. Big love to Donovan, too. Listen, Donnie, I love you, brother. We got a home run. I'm scab. You're not. I'm gone, son. The ego killer. Killing egos. And all kind of shit.